Okay, so um, today I'm going to show how to uh, how to create a virtual machine of an NI Linux RT device. And uh, the first thing is to download um, VirtualBox, install it, uh, whatever version, um, 6.1. Um, how, however, what you also need to do is you need to install uh, the USB extension pack um, to support USB free devices. And then another thing you'll need is a actual USB keyboard. Um, so if you're using a PC, it's fine. If you're using a laptop, yeah, you'd probably need to get one. I had to um, with two different versions of laptops. So it seems to be quite consistent. Um, so pop over, uh, get that. And then once you have that installed, uh, like I do currently, um, then the other thing you'll need, of course, is the, um, uh, well, I, the way I do it is I kind of, if, I, if I'm using an RT system, uh, I'll just download and install the whole package suite um, for embedded systems. Um, so you can go download, it installs the real-time module, um, uh, the Serio drivers, the PXI drivers as well. Um, so it works straight away. Pretty reliable. Um, big install, uh, but yeah, pretty good. Uh, once that's installed, then in your C program files, you will actually have um, an ISO package. Uh, I can't remember where it is, so it might take me a few seconds to actually find where I, where that goes. Um, but let's get started. So uh, this one's one I created earlier, as I say, um, called Try Try. Uh, but let's create a new one, um, and let's call it. Uh, well, I've got one called Ni Linux RT. That's the one I'm using to test out my Yocto builds. Um, currently, there is a problem um, where the admin and password has been set somewhere. I'm pretty sure I may have got rid of a recipe. Um, so need to fix that, that'll be fine. Uh, it's sort of an OPKG setting that you can also set, so uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Anyway, for this one, we're just gonna focus on using the standard image uh, that ships with NI. Uh, you wanna kind of test out your lab, your code, but you don't have, uh, say, well, you don't have um, uh, your NI hardware. Uh, the other reason you might wanna do this is if you wanna cross compile, so you can compile on the target itself um, in the virtual machine, and then you can, well, you can potentially turn that into a package, um, or you can do some a trick that um, Etis does, where you uh, have an SSH tunnel where you can see the, uh, the folders. You can share those. Um, you can set the path to that um, shared drive, um, and then you can execute that code on the target as well. Um, that can be done for like preliminary testing, um, or, or you can copy it over once you're done. So uh, let's give this one a name: um, NI Linux RT example, for instance. Um, and it immediately picks up, but we've just gone with like li any Linux variant. You know, just tell it not Xandros, but um, uh, other Linux might do. Uh, I'm going to go with this one. We're going to use a 64-bit version because that's what most of the NI kit is now. Um, and then I'm going to give it two megabytes. Um, sorry, two gigabytes because that's again most of the kit. Uh, just create. I'm not too fussed about what kind of disk image we have. Dynamically allocate. Uh, yeah, just kind of skip through this um, and now create. Uh, now let's go to the settings and effectively, um, all we need to do is is enable uh, most of the uh, features uh, for our processor, for our motherboard. Um, acceleration should already be as we need. Network, it's a big one. We need to have it as host only. Um, you can set up uh, the second network adapter and this one's good as a bridged adapter. Uh, for instance, if you go to OPKG update, it's going to need to talk to the NI feeds. Um, so it's going to need an internet connection, um, otherwise it'll just kick off. Uh, the final part is storage. So storage is where we're going to say, hey, let's get our uh, image. Um, and USB, we want to um, enable USB free. And then I want to add my keyboard. Uh, so here's my keyboard. Um, and I want to go, yep. Now, the kind of annoying part to this is we only need the keyboard once. We need to need it to type in one letter as well, or well, two keys. Um, we need to type in yes uh, by Y and then enter uh, during our installation process. Uh, so now let's go back and let's pick out our optical disk. I'm gonna go add a new one. Um, I need to find my ISO. So this should be somewhere around program files, um, national instruments, do do do. And then uh, I'm just gonna go dot ISO just to find it a bit quicker. This was originally also uh, found by uh, well other people on the internet. 
um, and then I located uh, the article. Um, it's set out as instructions and sometimes it does lack things. You'll see that with all kind of my instructions or my articles. They say, hey, you know, this is um, uh, not complete um, in some format. So I'm going to just double check where this is uh, so we can direct it more in future. Um, I've mounted it. Okay, that might be where why it's found it. Um, let's try a different way to so we can be more explicit about how we find it. So ISO um, and here it is. So I'm going to get open that location for us. Um, open file location. That's what I wanted really. Okay, so it's under utilities, Linux RT, PXI safe mode. Um, and we're going to see if there's any future versions. There is, so there's eight. Um, so let's go there and pick that one out instead. Uh, so let's just change that for that. And then let's pick our standard x64 recovery. It says safe mode because that's not going to be the complete part to having this ready. So we'll say choose. Uh, we'll say OK. And that should be ready to boot now. So let's start it up. And yeah, we're fine. Here we go. It'll skip very fast um, and then start the default provisioning. So that ISO is the one that NI Max uses to create a uh, USB. So if I open NI Max while this uh, gets going, and here's the yes that we need to type. So key press. Oh and get back to that and then enter and then it will get started um, in NI Max what I'm talking about is this create NI Linux RT recovery USB uh, it just pulls that um, uses a USB uh, um, image creator tool um, and uh, hey oh look our provisioning is done so so that we don't boot into that device again uh, let's disable uh, that and then let's type in reboot and click OK And that'll start rebooting. Okay, cool. And then let's log in. So the password should be blank on. Yep, cool. And it's in safe mode because it doesn't have anything installed. Um, so let's find our device on our network. And here it is. You'll see it actually identifies as a VM. Um, it knows it's a virtual machine. It identifies itself as a 903, which is an Intel processor uh, system with x64. Um, we can see it in Macs, which is brilliant. Uh, now, let's also install some software uh, because we'll need to in order to actually use this as its proper uh, purpose of testing out with LabVIEW. So, uh, I can go with the Linux RT system image, um, or I can go with Compact Rio images. I, mean, I prefer to kind of have my own uh, selection when I install, so I'm going to go OK. That should pop up a new window with options on what we're installing. Hmm, maybe it doesn't. It's just trying to. Let's try it again. Uh, let's do custom software installation. Here we go. This is the options that we want. Um, so let's pick out that we need LabVIEW real time for sure. I ever want to use it with, uh, well, LabVIEW. Um, like to keep the FTP server on. Uh, let's have some network streams in there. Um, we might want the scan engine as well for when, uh, if we want to use the network variable engine. Um, if you're testing things out, you know, you won't have the hardware, you won't have I.O., so you could uh, fake that on the system, um, simulate it rather, and then you could have it uh, just pinging back whatever that simulated I.O. is to um, through the network to your HMI, which is going to be a typical kind of usage of your embedded system. And then um, that's probably a good starting point to test out code with, at the very least. So. Uh, web dev client with SSL. Mm, I do want SSL or SSH. Uh, I think we don't need to do anything to install that. It's part of the base image. 
and let that install. So I'm going to pause that while and pause the recording while it's installing. Cool. So we're now at a point where it's uh, just rebooted. Um, as you can see, you know, it rebooted here. Um, don't be afraid of it. It's not got a login. Just click enter and it will give you that. Um, and then you can log in again and go OK. Um, and now we're in shell, which is pretty nice for a Linux developer. Um, I'll click finish here. Um, if you want to do it for SSH, uh, you can enable SSH here as well. Uh, so I'm just going to click save on that one. Uh, it will say restart. I don't want to restart right now. I've already got a way of, of putting in commands. Um, which, let's just do a quick OPKG update as well. Just get things going. Um, we can see it's populating from the download feeds. Um, and then uh, final bit is kind of give credit where credit is due. Uh, so is this post on the idea exchange where somebody uh, initially asked, hey, can I have a virtual machine that can run the uh, Linux? Uh, sorry, not the Linux, actually, just LabVIEW real-time systems. And that's a kind of the key part I'm going to point out here. So this is back when we're talking about like VxWorks, we're talking about Farlap as well down here, um, you know, pre-2015 um, and still sort of that um, era uh, where... VxWorks and FileApp is a more common um, NI uh, real-time systems. Obviously, we've moved over to, to completely Linux. Um, it's where most of my articles will be. In fact, all of my articles will be if they're going to refer to a real-time system, um, unless I'm going off of any NI kind of stuff. I might have a look at Zenomia at some point, um, but that's now kind of a patch, uh, for instance. Um, I might look at the Raspberry Pi real-time system, though, as I have one. Um, the kind of key point here is, you know, you, this one is actually for a file app system, but it did give that inspiration that, hey, it is possible. Um, and um, just trying it out, I think Neil uh, Crosson as well actually came up with a, a pretty good list. Uh, I can't find his post. It's on LinkedIn somewhere um, of how he did it. And I think that was a Linux system. Um, it did also give me the initial starting points. Um, mainly I found that, yeah, enable most of the stuff. Um, doesn't really matter what kind of uh, SATA derive you go with. Um, just for USB free needs to be enabled. You need to use a USB keyboard sometimes to put in that final uh, yes and then enter. Um, and then you can get going. You can use it through Macs. We could enable SSH. You know, we don't need the keyboard after that point um, as well. And uh, from there, you know, you can get going. If you're going to be using like Yocto like I am, um, you can install packages, um, you know, reconfigure the, the OPKG uh, feeds as I've put um, in my articles as well. Uh, so that's kind of it. And you have a Linux RT system on your virtual machine.